you, Rosa. Thank you, Conference. We turn to Resolution 6 on benefit sanctions to be proposed by Mary Black, MP, and seconded by Robert Innes. Please welcome Mary Black. I should start uh, by making clear to conference and to party members and also to my constituents that uh, despite recent media reports um, from vari various outlets, I'm going nowhere until the job's done. <laughs> now, while my disdain for Westminster is of no secret, and my desire for there to be no need for me to have to be there should be of no surprise. I have to say that the Tory benefit sanctions regime has to be one of the worst things to ever come out of that place. I've heard, I've heard truly harrowing stories from people throughout the UK who have struggled to feed themselves, struggled to clothe themselves, and they've struggled to keep a roof and sometimes lost a roof over their head because the UK government has left them with absolutely nothing. Now, as a new MP, I said I would try to make some small but effective changes, common sense changes to benefit sanctions. So last year, I secured a private member's bill. And this is a rare opportunity for backbench MPs to create a law. And I simply wanted to ensure that a person's mental health, physical health, their caring responsibilities, and risk of homelessness had to be taken into account before any sanction could be applied. Now, of course, the bill was shot down. Very few Labour MPs showed up to support the bill, and the Tory minister proceeded to talk it out. Now, I pleaded with Tory MPs who did not believe and they could not imagine how anyone could suffer under their amazing system. And I told them that they should watch the incredibly powerful and absolutely gut-wrenching film by the very talented Ken Loach, the I, Daniel Blake film. And I would still urge anyone who wants to understand what's actually happening to people in our society to watch it. But again, this fell on deaf ears and was coldly dismissed as purely fiction. Now, if I had the power to do so, I would scrap the sanctions regime immediately. And that's why I'm proud, and I think that we all should be proud, that the SNP government in Scotland have chosen to take a different approach when it comes to social security. I'm proud that we believe that people, the person, should be at the heart of what our system is and uh, should always come first. I'm proud that we want to use the very little powers that we soon will have over social security to inject some much needed dignity and respect into the very heart of that system in Scotland. But let's not forget, so long as we are ruled by Westminster, 85% of all social security power remains in the hands of Theresa May and the Tories. 85%. So let me be clear, sanctions are cruel. People face a postcode lottery. And the worst part of it is that sanctions do not work. We know that benefit sanctions actually cause the vulnerable to fall into hardship. We know that it actually makes it harder for people to find work. And we know that sanctions actually cost more to administer than they even save. And the government must know that this completely contradicts their arguments. Now, I know they must, because I've told them often enough. <laughs> so that begs the question, what is the real reason they like to impose sanctions? And once you remove common sense, mm -hmm. the only argument left is ideology. The Conservative Party have always sought to cause division between groups of society in order to prevent that very same society from uniting and holding those in positions of power to account. They are the absolute masters of pitting people against each other. History is littered with examples of people in power causing an utter mess, much like the banking crisis, and then using that difficult time as an excuse to impose austerity and to blame onto the shoulders of those who are already struggling and those who are blameless.
So let's make it clear to everyone, it wasn't job seekers, firefighters or junior doctors that caused the financial crash. It wasn't the fault of immigrants or those in work or those who are looking for a job. And yet these are the, exactly the kind of people who are endlessly punished by the Conservatives. And if anything, people who can't find work are simply the victims of poor government policy that's not creating enough suitable jobs. So if someone can't make a job centre meeting in order to receive the incredibly small and only income that they can get, surely it's our duty to understand why, not simply to take that lifeline away from them. Fundamentally, any government should not be making its own citizens destitute. And that is exactly what this Tory government is doing. So let me be clear. It's not fiction, it's not exaggerated, and it's a reality for far too many people. And if Westminster refuses to use the powers it has to end this cruelty, then I've got an idea. Let's bring those very powers back up the road and let the Scottish Government do the job right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And Robert Innes will second the resolution. Robert's a first-time speaker. No pressure, Robert. No pressure. Uh, to be followed by Jimmy Hepburn to move the amendment. Robert. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Conference. Uh, as Derek said, no pressure following Mary. Uh, I'm a first-time speaker. Uh, I just take this time to thank uh, the SNP for the work they've done to date on highlighting the unfair sanction regime. Um, and take a moment to highlight how the benefit sanction regime targets some of society's most vulnerable. I mean, you just need to look at the facts. Single parents, more likely to be sanctioned. Homeless people, more likely to be sanctioned. Mental health, more likely to be sanctioned. I mean, those with mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, those with learning difficulties, those who are computer illiterate, these are the people that have been targeted by the unfair Tory sanction regime. Uh, <coughs> it's also important to highlight uh, job centre staff who have to deal with, they have to deal with their own mental health issues, they have to deal with their conscience when they have to go home at night and think about that they've had to sanction somebody for being 10 minutes late for an interview, you know, I, I just think that's crazy. Uh, just uh, also, Ma Ma Mary's bill did do a lot to highlight uh, how unfair this system is and uh, I mean it was only, it was only little changes to the system, it wasn't scrapping it completely, and yet again, the SNP, Westminster MPs are bouncing their head off walls in the, to the Tory benches. Um, I mean, food banks, that's another point, food banks, they, they, they exist because of things such as sanctions, and I mean, I think that having a, a fairer system in Scotland would be something that I would want, something that I'm sure a lot of people would want. And I mean, just finish off by saying that the, the Tories are actively targeting, harming and humiliating the very people they should be protecting. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And Jamie Hepburn, Minister for Employability and Training, will propose the amendment to be seconded by George Adam, MSP. Thank you very much, uh, Derek, and I begin by thanking uh, Paisley Tannehill Branch for uh, bringing forward this uh, resolution. I'd also like to start by uh, uh, offering uh, some thanks to our outstanding team of MPs who day in, day out are holding uh, the UK government to account for a whole variety of issues. We just saw some of that from Mary uh, a few moments ago, and uh, before that we saw it with Alison Thewlis. They are doing outstanding work representing our party uh, down in the Imperial Parliament. Uh, nowhere, nowhere uh, more do the Tories uh, deserve to be challenged, though, than in their handling, or rather their mishandling, of the social security system. Their uh, harsh uh, welfare reforms have hammered the most vulnerable in our society. As they cut social security uh, to the bone, people are being pushed into poverty, onto the breadline, and into a spiral of despair and marginalisation. Uh, no element of this system 
it typifies its cruel nature uh, better than the form of sanctions the D DWP uh, applies. Uh, the UK government, of course, argues that they are necessary to get people to move into work, but evidence shows it's an ineffective means to do so. It's not just Mary that has been presenting uh, the evidence uh, that should be plain to the UK government to see. The Joseph Rowntree Foundation have reported that sanctions lead to longer term outcomes for earnings, job quality and employment retention that are unfavourable. The Behavioural Insights team, which is a social purpose company part owned by the UK government, has said that financial sanctions may cause individuals to take up lower quality jobs and experience wa wage loss and reduced job duration. Even the UK government's own organisation can recognise the failure of their policy. So our MPs are right to keep doing the fantastic work they are and putting pressure on uh, the Tories for their disgraceful sanction system. But conference, so too can you rely on your Scottish government to act as well. From next month, we will begin operating a new employment programme which has been devolved through the Scotland Act. Implementing this will not be without its challenges, uh, not least financial, with a, a quite uh, astonishing 80% plus reduction in the budget being passed us by the UK government. But implementing this gives us opportunities, two opportunities, to create a person-centred enabling a programme that will work with uh, someone uh, to he help them into work opportunities, to do something uh, different and better than that which went before, an opportunity to show in Scotland that we have a government whose starting assumption is that someone engaging in our programme is genuinely looking for work rather than uh, using Tory rhetoric of shirkers and strivers. And I am determined that we take that opportunity. That is why a conference I took the decision that, unlike that which went before, our employment programme will not facilitate or enable the UK government sanctions regime in any shape, way or form. No person will be compelled... <laughs> no person will be compelled under threat of losing the support they need to take part in our programme. Instead, we we'll provide people with that opportunity to get the support they want and need to get into work our programme will have no threats, no coercion, no pernicious sanctions. That conference is the difference an SNP government makes. That conference is the difference that having power in Scotland's hands makes. And that conference might just be a message we want to take to the people of Scotland over the next few months. And George Adam, MSP, to second the amendment. Thank you, Derek, and thank you, Conference. So far, apart from Jamie, this uh, debate has actually been Team Paisley on tour. You know, it's, uh, and ironically, this week marks the 30th anniversary of my involvement in the SNP, and it was actually in uh, Monday. And I know most of you are really surprised at that. You can't believe that that young boy has been in the party so long. But in 1987, when I joined the SNP, uh, my hair was dark brown. It's not now. And I was 17 at the time, and obviously I'm not 17 just now, but Scotland was controlled by a right-wing Tory government in Westminster that thought little of Scotland and our communities, and not much has changed from that point of view. But now we have a Scottish government in our Scottish Parliament standing up for Scotland every single day of the week. That's the key difference, Conference. <laughs> My 17-year-old self would probably never believe there would have been a Scottish Parliament, let alone an SNP Scottish Government in its 10th year. He'd probably shocked to hear that I was actually a member of that Parliament as well. But this current law in Westminster continued to prey on the weakest in our society. And there's a time in everybody's life where you need help and support, and that's the point of Social Security, being there in difficult times. Today, and for the next couple of years, we'll be talking about Scotland's choices and the difference between ourselves and the UK government. As Paisley's MSP, I've witnessed the many of the horror stories created by the Westminster government's sanction regime. Families come into our office with their last best chance for some action after being left penniless by the DWP. This is not our choice for Scotland's future, and it never will be, conference. We want a social security system that has dignity and respect at the heart of its agenda. We also have to look at the choices that have been made by our Scottish Government. 
It was Jamie Hepburn, the Minister for Employability, that fought and argued with the UK Government to ensure that the new employability programme, effective from April 2017, will not facilitate the UK Government's sanction system. That conference is a key difference and part of the reason we must support this motion as amended. Because that shows the type of government we have here in Scotland, one that will care and look after our people of Scotland during their times of difficulty. Conference, I've known Jamie Hepburn for a very long time, and I know him to be a very modest man, and he's too humble to tell you about the great work he has completed, but I will. This is a government minister who puts people before political dogma, a government minister who, as I previously uh, said, pushed Westminster's establishment on how we should ensure that Scotland's employability programmes would not be affected by their sanction regime. Even though the current powers are nowhere near the types of powers we need for the transformational change that we seek for our nation, it's what we do with these powers that are important. But there's one thing we can count on conference. As always, our Scottish Government will do the right thing for Scotland and take our nation forward. I urge you to support this motion along with the amendment. Let's show Westminster once again how different our priorities are to them. Thank you, George. There are no cards in against. I'm sorry to the other speakers I'm unable to call. Can I ask delegates, is the amendment supported by conference? Okay. And with that agreement, uh, I ask conference now, is the resolution as amended passed by acclaim? It is.